we are gathered to honor a very special man, Dr. Jerry DiMartolo, who dedicated more than four decades to the Credible University. As a newcomer to campus, our time together overlapped for only a few days when I learned of this great opportunity to recognize Jerry's remarkable legacy today. I spoke with those who knew him best, his close colleagues that he worked alongside for many years. What I found were three common themes about Jerry's leadership. He is an advocate, Jerry is a man of integrity, and he is an exemplary leader. I learned that he is fair, respectful, and treats all students, coaches, and sport programs equally. He stands by his core principles. He is intentional, purposeful, and considerate in everything he does, which is why he became such a good love figure here at SU. Jerry dedicated 44 years of his life to Salisbury University. He gave everything in service of his coaches, students, and staff. His integrity, advocacy, and leadership will always be remembered. It is my honor to be a part of recognizing such a humble and well-respected leader today. I'm privileged to continue the tradition of excellence that he set for this university. It is my pleasure now to introduce our mayor, Jack Heath. Good afternoon. I don't know if you remember Jerry when we first met. He was in Holloway Hall when my friend was uh, going to school in business school. Uh, we've been together quite a few years watching the game. Uh, I'm honored today to present a certificate of recognition to Dr. Jerry DiBartolo from the city of Salisbury to recognize 44 years of service and commitment to the students and faculty of Salisbury University. Jerry has helped students both on and off the field, serving as a teacher of marketing, associate dean, award-winning coach, interim director, and then settling in as director of athletics and campus recreation. During his time at SU, Jerry has been part of some major renovations and projects like the update to the Max Physical Activity Center and the completion of the East Campus. Jerry's dedication to athletics has presented him with numerous awards, all while leading the team on the championship game. Thank you for your willingness to make a difference to those at Salisbury University and in our community. You are an inspiration to those around you. Enjoy your retirement, it is well deserved. And witness thereof, I hereunto set my hand the city seal of the city of Salisbury on the 26th day of August 2023. Congratulations. It's now my pleasure to introduce our president. Dr. Good afternoon, everybody. As the president of this incredible institution, I am privileged to, to do a lot of amazing things. But today may be one of my favorite days. It is with great pride that I am here to celebrate our friend and colleague, Jerry DiBartolo, with such a momentous honor. The naming of our soccer complex in honor of Jerry is a testament to the legacy that he has created for our great university. Jerry dedicated 44 incredible years to Salisbury University, but it's not the years, it's what he did with those years that makes him so remarkable. In 34 seasons of coaching men's soccer team, Jerry achieved an extraordinary 410, 180, 60 record and received the Capital Athletic Conference Coach of the Year Award seven times, and the Regional Coach of the Year Award six times. He led the program to the NCAA Tournament 13 times, including a trip to the National Semifinals in 2004. Under his tenure as the Director of Athletics and Campus Recreation, SU had 18 students named Academic All-Americans, won 31 national championships, the conference championships, 
coming four team national championships and 10 individual national championships. Gary was instrumental in the development of the, of the, the beautiful athletic facilities that we see all around us. Seagull Stadium, the Don William Seagull Baseball Stadium, the Margie Knight Seagull Softball Stadium, and now the Jerry DiBartolo Seagull Soccer Stadium. His passion for our university left his mark on countless people. He has furthered the appreciation for our athletics teams. He has shown us how important those programs are to our students, the countless outcomes that they create, and the impact that they have on our community. So, Gary, I can think of no one more deserving of this honor. And personally, on behalf of Todd. We thank you for always being patient with our thousands of questions about the intricacies of the rules of field hockey and the fraud, and all the other questions we've had since we Your patience will always be remembered. Thank you for always putting our students and their success, both on and off the field, first. Thank you for your dedication that has shaped this university into what it is today. It is an honor to have your name forever interlinked with Salisbury University. Congratulations. So, today I did not prepare any comments, and I did that on purpose. Because in thinking about this and what I would say, there's just Really, two words that summarize it all. And that's thank you. Thank you to all the players throughout the years who were part of this program and helped us go from a first season record of four wins and 12 losses back in 1982 where we were one of the first programs in the country to have a woman play for our men's team. Some of you guys who might have been on that team or here remember her name, Sally Cliff. She was a pretty tenacious player. And all the others we've come through, so thank you very much. I want to say thank you to the various coaches, assistant coaches who've been part of the program. You know, Jerry DiBartolo didn't win any games, didn't score any goals. It all came through hard work of players, assistant coaches, who many of them got paid very little, but believed in the concept of establishing a soccer power here at Salisbury University. I want to say thank you to current and past administrations, athletic director Lizzie, for all that they've done to help in this transition, and I know that they're moving this university forward in the right direction. I have to say thank you to my wife, Mary, and son, Tom and Anybody who's coached, whether it's high school or college sports, know that a coach's wife is never in So without their Time, patience, and understanding, whether it be the day after Thanksgiving, having to go run to a tournament to recruit some talented young players, or having to miss some events because there was a soccer game or a soccer commitment we had to, had to, you know, had to do. That, you know, they were the ones who supported and suffered, and we talked about this place and this team being a family. And that was always part of the concept that they would be involved. And many of our alums knew from, you know, when my sons were young and they were running around during practice and pestering the players to now they're grown young men and doing well in their careers. And we have to say thank you to the families who entrusted your men, your sons, through our program to enable them and hopefully become better people 
once they departed from our institutions. You know, as I, as I look at the complex, I can think back to all the various fields that we played on during my years affiliated with this program. When I first got here in 1979, we played on the field over where Conway Hall is now, a field that was used by men's soccer in the fall and men's lacrosse in the spring. Needless to say, it was not in very good shape. It was a sandy soil. And the thing I remember most about that field is the fact that we had to cut many that was under the turf, under the, you know, the turf that they put down, grass dirt, because players got their Fleet caught in it all the time. Then we moved over to Seagull Stadium. We were the first team to actually play in Seagull Stadium because the bleachers were not clear because they were on the wrong kind of food. So we played over there for at least a season or two. Then we played up here on where the outfield the baseball team is right now on a field that in the fall was a men's soccer field and in the spring became the intramural softball field. So obviously, then we moved down to here and took a lot of time in trying to build this field. Some of our old alums will remember when I asked you to quick, um, if there's no reason dining services, go into the dining hall and get knives. And we came out here and we dug out weeds in the Bermuda turf to make sure they wouldn't grow to try and make it look as nice as possible. And this space here became a space that opposing teams did not want to come and play because it was a tough place to win. Many teams would come and play and then turn around and say, we're never coming to your place again because you guys are too good this. Well, today I can say that this is by far one of, if not the best, Division three soccer complexes in the United States. We've invested a lot of money, the university invested a lot of money into this. We've taken great care of it, you can see. Uh, those of you golfers up there probably wish you could be out here and hit some balls off this perfect turf right now because it's in great shape. You know, to have my name up on that, Stand and call this the Jerry DeBartolo Soccer Complex is something that I could have never imagined when I came here back in 1979 with a little less weight, a lot more hair, big bushy mustache, and able to see the growth of this university and these programs over the years. You know, I'm humbled, I'm honored. Proud of this university. I'm proud of this program. You know, I'm so thankful for all the support and help. Thank you. Congratulate Gary on our soccer team. Thank you for your attendance. Go Seagulls.